So, so what I'm going to do is this. Starting tomorrow, I will take my lunch and I'll answer any question, but I'll answer anything you want on this. And I'll go through them and I'll answer it. Just come in lunch at your lunch. I'll answer a bunch of questions. Eat lunch in here. Just make sure we throw everything away. And I'll be glad to do it for the next few lunches down to this or any other question you have on the review packets. Or if you miss a review day, I'll take the three lunches next week and I'll answer any questions you have. So I will go through this and help you out immensely with this. And then after the test, I do reward you immensely. We have nothing but, like I said, fitness and bar hands. We do have a semester test and it'll be two weeks afterwards, but the test will be, remember how hard, you know, remember the, the short IDs, you know, you had to do for this first semester, this one only 28 short IDs. So I am being nice. So no, I think I, there's only a few short IDs and a few multiple choice and matching really very, very basic. Last year, almost everybody got away. You studied the AP exam or under the review packet and remember anything. Let's hope you remember things. You have no problem with it. I make it up for you on the test and then for the rest of the year. I promise. We just very just fitness and then doing basic work for me. Yard work, digging a new foundation. I did swimming pool, you know, things like that. Just basic stuff, a trench, you know, basic things like that. Huh? That's one I'm gonna have to send fourth period. We might lose some limbs there, but fourth period, that's what they're doing. Everyone's out to get me. So you're sending all of us to your house, even though everyone is out to get you. Now we know. No, now we know. Not where to to live. We have to do the whole thing. We're blindfolded. You put a bag over your head, take you over there, and you won't know how to get there. You understand? But we could just like look at the straight side. What? <laughs> Brackenridge, I live on a Confederate Boulevard. Is that what you're saying? I do not live on a Confederate Boulevard. All right. Yeah, we have that's we have a bunch of streets in Helen named after Confederates. Remember what I told you? It's a visual landing for a bunch of Confederates. There's a Brackenridge Avenue. There's a Davis after Jefferson Davis. Yeah, that's Helen. Huh? Helen, is a, Helen has interesting history, which that does. So I I will go over into this. I know it's a little bit more, but it's the last little thing. And so let's go ahead and take your notes out. Let's get back to, do we get the squeaky frog? We did, like, you must gave it. Yeah, that was squeaky So we didn't get to the assassination attempts on President Ford. I'm just skipping ahead this massive bit of history up to 1974. Is that what you wanted? All right. The U.S. Why isn't this going? Okay, I can't get this live back. Ta-da! Is this it? So let's do it. Let's go. So we're stuck with military dictators. Um, do we get to this? Do we talk about military dictators? Is that where we just got to him being killed? Is that right? Yeah. So now we're stuck with these military dictators. Give me a little bit like Afghanistan after after 2001, when the United States got involved in its civil war there. It's amazing. Get involved in civil wars and things don't go well. And and we got and, and so now there'd be a coup every six months up until '67. Finally, one general by the name of General Two took power. Last little bit. I'll just bring. Last thing, I promise. And then it would just be a few notes, a few other things in class, and then that semester test, and and then bags over your head, get into the van without windows, and go to my my compounds and to do work. When you guys would complain, somebody would rat on. All right, so with this, over through the government, and now the United States is going to be stuck with this. And this is going to be a big problem because the U.S. did not do the coup. Ironically, a month and a half after this, Kennedy, who actually very much was disturbed by this murder and worried about his popularity dropping dramatically because of civil rights, remember the March on Washington? What were the people who, who um, went to segregated lunch counters. What were they called? Yeah. So then how about those who went south to fight against Plessy, voting rights, freedom, and, riders. Yeah, freedom riders. And Kennedy was taking heat for his programs not passing. 
So in the campaign trip, because he needed Texas to win, on November 22nd, 1963, John Kennedy, while in Dallas, Texas, just flew in, going to the trademark in Dallas, Texas. Kennedy was assassinated. About an hour and a half later, B. Harvey Oswald was arrested for the assassination. He had just murdered a police officer in front of 11 witnesses while trying to make his escape. It appears as though he was trying to go to the Cuban embassy. He was a committed communist, committed Marxist, what he would have said. He'd already tried to defect to the Soviet Union once and lived there for a year and a half after lying about his discharge, lying to get out of the U.S. Marines. And then came back. He had actually been under FBI and CIA, CIA, FBI and indirectly CIA observation. Boy, they based him. But they found him. They found the murder rifle. Uh, here he is after he was arrested. He took pictures, a couple pictures with this, holding a communist mag, communist newspaper on the back of this very picture. Oswald wrote death or killer, I'm sorry, hunter of fascists. He thought Kennedy was a fascist or under fascist influence. The only safe way the United States would come out of this is Castro and the Soviet Union. He was also a desperate seeker of attention. But what made this very weird is that while being held in the Dallas police station on his way to be moved to the county jail two days after the assassination, a strip club owner by the name of Jack Ruby assassinated Oswald on national television. And there's a whole series of weird coincidences how this happened. If you look at this picture, this is an amazing picture. This is Ruby literally seconds before he pulled the pistol out and shot Kennedy. I mean, like I said, Kennedy shot Oswald. Oswald would die soon afterwards. And so a lot of people began to believe, I think for good reason, that maybe something else sinister was involved. And there was a fear from day one that this was the Soviet or remember what was the operation to try to heal Castro? The Alamo. The Alamo? What was the operation? The Bay of Pace was the invasion. Mongoose. Operation Mongoose. And they thought maybe Castro was behind this. And so, Johnson, the brand new president, Lyndon Johnson, who hated being vice president, all of a sudden, wow, did he become president? He kind of coerced the chief justice to be the head of a commission, even though the actual members had very little to do with it. There they are presenting the findings. It's 12 volumes. I have the I've read the summary. It, it's the investigation is actually kind of amazing how much investigation they did. But the first thing they ruled out it wasn't the Russians, the Soviets, it wasn't the Cubans. Because a lot of people might have won World War III. And there's never been any evidence, even though you might hear people say, well, yeah, Castro was behind it, but there's no evidence. Never has been. They said Oswald acted alone. But there were some minor but noticeable mistakes and a few other issues with it. the CIA, but especially the FBI, did not cooperate at all. Now, the FBI did the actual investigation, but they didn't give up their secret files, and neither did the CIA. And when a few little inconsistencies started to come out, more and more Americans, by the end of this decade, began to believe it was a government cover, that perhaps either they're hiding something they knew behind it, or maybe it was the CIA who did that. And with disillusionment with the government and the Vietnam War began to grow, more and more Americans believe that. Today, about 70% of Americans believe that the Warren Commission was wrong and there was a cover of a massive conspiracy. Now, I should add, the evidence of that is nil. But the FBI and CIA did cover up stuff. And we know that for fact. How do we know that? Because they kept it secret. Um, for 60 years and won't be released till 2028, their files. I should add, there's a good reason why they kept it secret. They had a man under observation who murdered the president. Wow, did they screw up. But here's the thing that happened now. LBJ is president. This gonna be this general feeling of distrust. LBJ is gonna come into office and his first goal Kennedy couldn't get anything passed. I'm going to get it passed, and I'm going to get more passed. And he called this program the Great Society, a three-pronged 
We made Great Society a three-pronged program to improve the lives of all Americans. And so it's going to be civil rights, a war on poverty to end the scourge of poverty that still plagued over 20% of Americans in the most wealthy nation the world had ever seen, and general cultural growth. He wanted massive aid. Now, it never really happened, but his goal was aid for arts, humanities, a commercial free television called public television. They're now virtually all funded by private donors. But the idea was it would be government funded, so therefore it would not be for whatever the lowest commercial gains. Here he is giving the speech. This is the old teleprompters. They literally just had a paper scroll with the speech on at the commencement address at the University of Michigan in 1963. This incredibly ambitious program. Yes, here he is in this weird tan suit on the LBJ ranch. I will tell you stories a little bit later, but LBJ had, what's the word I'm looking for? An ego. But the big goal, he's going to finish that new deal. Here's a very young Lyndon Johnson. Very young. Lyndon Johnson just elected to the Texas House, or I'm sorry, the U.S. House of Representatives from Texas, meeting FDL. And that was, that was his idol. And so his thought was, I can finish these programs. I, and the Great Society, they will pass over 1,000 bills. No bit of legislative history in American history was like this. But the first bill that's going to come up will be civil rights. That civil rights bill that was stalled and Johnson was going to get it passed. What was it called where one senator could hold up a bill by talking, by speaking, yes, filibuster. The previous Civil Rights Act of 57, which really meant nothing, it was the bill had no power. But there was a filibuster for over 65 days, and the bill turned into a nothing bill. They're trying to do the same thing. But Johnson, who was a master of the Senate when he was in there, worked with a couple senators, Hubert Humphrey from Minnesota, and the new Senate Majority Leader, this guy named Mike Mansfield, who grew up in Butte, Montana Senate. Montana had two of the most powerful senators in Washington, D.C. in the 1960s. Mansfield and the guy named Lee Metcalf. If you've ever been to a wilderness area in the United States of America, that was Mike, Man or not Mike, I'm sorry, Lee Mansfield. Lee Mansfield. Well, the Civil Rights Bill, Johnson and Humphrey and Mansfield massively worked the Senate. The Democrats had a huge majority, but segregation and Southern Democrats were opposed. And more conservative Republicans, Northern Liberal Democrats and Northern Liberal Republicans were for it. They outfoxed the segregationists and got a Civil Rights Act passed. And it said no discrimination based upon race, religion, national origin, or sex. Southern Democrats threw in that word, no discrimination based upon sex. They thought that was a poison pill that would kill the bill because no man would ever believe or vote that women should not be discriminated against in commercial affairs or workplace because that's not where women belong. Women do not deserve equal rights. That was a thought, but it passed. It passed. And so Northern Democrats, Northern Liberal Democrats, including Mansfield and Mack of Montana, and enough of Northern Liberal Republicans voted for. So under the 14th Amendment, women are not guaranteed equal rights to the state. It is an incredible gray area that's never been resolved. But under the law, that is how we know discrimination based upon race or sex to the state. It doesn't mean that there's still not um, some regulation, but it basically got rid of most Jim Crow rights. Most, everybody got that most Jim Crow. Can't you have a question? Uh, what do you mean that? Oh, man. Got it. Okay. In fact, some places, who is the governor of Alabama that was the segregationist? Did that yesterday? Do you remember? Yeah, George Wallace. In his home state of Alabama, 
During the New Deal, they built these massive public swimming pools in Alton, Montgomery, Birmingham. They filled them in with the cement. And now they're just this big cement plot, plot um, big cement plot in the middle of a park rather than integrate these pools. Which seems just insane. No, it is insane, but it shows you the depth of that feeling there. One more law will pass, and we'll have to get to how this was passed in a second. There's also other civil rights law, but these are the two biggies. Voting rights was not addressed in this. And the, the movement pushed Johnson to finally push for a Voting Rights Act, and it got rid of the remaining literacy test. It fully ended the grandfather's clause, and the poll tax was gone by, by constitutional amendment. And so this guaranteed voting rights, and said so that any state with a history of this, of voting rights violations, cannot change their laws unless they go to the Justice Department. Montana was included in this because Montana had a history of, of violating the rights of American Indians and not letting them vote. So the Voting Rights Act applied to this state too. And that would be the law it allowed for, or it finally, finally African Americans got that right that they'd earned in the Civil War and Reconstruction and was taken away. So it took almost 100 years, but yes. both that does tax that every voter had to pay at the beginning of the year for the end. There, there's, there's loopholes. In 2011, the Supreme Court struck down what's important. Everyone got that? So the Voting Rights Act is basically gone. And they just ruled uh, three different times in the last five years. And so many of the laws that existed before the Voting Rights Act are coming back. Or let me first, they've come back. Mostly in states that have violated this. Montana, there are a number of laws. We try to kind of peck away at that. Uh, a few different times. Yeah. Well, yeah, we are a much more conservative country, or at least the Supreme Court is much more conservative. So that's civil rights. We'll come back to that. And then the war on poverty would be very, very huge. Food stamps, which were originally uh, hard to just raise prices for farmers, would be expanded as a, it's tiny, it's not that much, but if you don't have much, any little bit counts to pay solely for food. In the 1990s, they changed the technical name food snaps to SNAP. Supplemental Nutrition Allowance uh, Program, uh, but it's still food stamps. And it was, food stamps were greatly expanded during COVID. And in fact, poverty went down a lot during COVID, but now most of those things are gone. And the food stamps are being cut back right now. Uh, there's a mass, the first ever full education act for, it's not huge, but but still, aid to public schools, K through 12 and college. And it would be here that you get the first direct aid for government for college students outside the GI Bill. Like Pell Grants, which are direct aid for lower income students and guaranteed student loans. Johnson's plan was to guarantee student loans would be a stopgap until you no know, tuition in public schools. That never happened. And now, Student loans out too loud for price of culture or even not before. Head Start, there's announcing it, and that would be daycare for lower income people. A pretty amazing program. Medicare, health care for the elderly, Medicaid, health insurance for lower income. This is a little bit more complex because every state has different Medicaid. Every state has different. Medicare is a national program. It, it's it's weird how they did that. They never reformed that and we're kind of stuck with it. AFDC was direct money, very small amounts of money to families with dependent children, but this would be eliminated in 1996. The U.S. gets very little direct aid besides food stamps. But there's over a thousand laws were, were done. And let me add this. The poverty rate went down by over 100 percent. I mean, poverty went down by over 70 percent, went down dramatically. 
to about 10% of the population. Now, when these programs would start to go away during the more kind of the conservative revival, it would go up to about 16. Poverty rate actually went down to about 8% during COVID because of the government program. But those have gone away and poverty has gone up pretty fast. Right? That was so it's all, these are all bills that are passed from 64 to 60. Here's Johnson talking to uh, people in Appalachia and West Virginia who were known, but the poverty in West Virginia is, is was and is extreme. And how he got all these bills would be passed would be called the Johnson Treaty. He had this way to control, beg, plead, threaten, promise, humiliate, <laughs> flatter. He had this way of talking to potential voters. He would say anything or do anything. And one of the things he would do is he's such a he's just a big guy. He was tall, but just big, big ears, big nose, big hand. He was just kind of this looming figure. And he would get right in their face. And so there's not a lot of pictures of this. Here he is talking to the segregationist senator from Alabama, Richard Russell, about dropping the filibuster for the Civil Rights Act. And he just had that way. I will tell you some Johnson stories after the test, and you will not believe this guy was our president. It was both, I would argue, just amazing, amazingly effective and kind of admirable. And at the same time, really deceitful and creepy. But Johnson was, that's Lyndon Johnson. I mean, the guy had an immense ego. He, uh, everything was about Lyndon Johnson. I mean, he, his ranch was the LBJ ranch. Everything was LBJ. His wife, no one knew his wife's name because she was Lady Bird Johnson. Did it? There's on and on about this. He had to, I just thought it's funny him howling with a dog in the Oval Office. He had, he was given a couple of beagles. He liked to hold the beagles by the ears. I don't know why. When the beagles had pops, or I'm sorry, the two beagles, um, one beagle was called, any guesses? Mm -hmm. Little Beagle Johnson one. <laughs> Little Beagle Johnson two. When they had pops, in fact, every child who came to the Oval Office, they, he would give them a basket full of beagle pops. I made that part, but he, <laughs> but the, but the, his beagles had pops and they were all in this house and he showed the kid. But this immense eagle, but let's be clear about something. If somebody's going to run for president, they have to be shockingly narcissistic. I mean, they have to be. So they're all going to be a little weird. My guess is most people are president would be people you wouldn't want to hang out with. Which, are you ever going to hang out with the president? Yes. Oh. yes, I am. You know. But they got to be a little bit because they're going to be attacked by every, from every side. So they have to have an ego that can withstand it. You know, you're horrible. No, I'm not. I'm the greatest person ever. And then move on. That's what you got to think. So Johnson, and I'll tell you Johnson stories. They're wow. But the election in 64, then Johnson was going to win on his own right. And all the way with LBJ or LBJ for the USA, doesn't it just rhyme? And Johnson wanted every vote. Hubert Horatio Humphrey, that civil rights senator from, from and uh, liberal economics, pro-union senator from Minnesota, would be his running mate. Yes, he made Humphrey dress in that same ugly brown suit. Nobody said no to Lyndon Johnson. Nobody. Yeah, that's true. And if you did say no, he didn't hear it. And he would keep talking at you, at you, and she would finally agree. You say yes, just don't leave him alone, leave me alone. Hubert Horatio Humphrey, so he's, he'll be HQ. Get it? Okay, so Humphrey, he wanted to win on his own right, and he wanted that great society. The Republicans were going through a turbulent time. And there was a conservative insurgency against the liberal Republicans like Dewey and Dwight Eisenhower. And in 1960, they put groundswell up of conservative of delegates 
swept into the convention and got the conservative Barry Goldwater. Right here, Barry Goldwater from Arizona as their nominee. And this was very, very conservative. And the big element that got people, in fact, the element that got the most support was Goldwater's opposition to the Civil Rights Bill. They said this went against American values. So a lot of Republicans voted for the Civil Rights Bill. Goldwater didn't. Here is a Goldwater pamphlet that they packed, went through the South with and then apply because of the Civil Rights Act. A white man will lose his job and a black man. We really want to apply this idea that an unqualified black man. So it really has some racist elements to it. We'll get this, we'll get that job. That's what LBJ means. And it's pretty effective. And this goes against American values. In fact, during the convention, there was a plank proposed at the Republican convention just in opposition to the Ku Klux Klan. Not opposition or um, not about the Civil Rights Act or any, just against the Ku Klux Klan. And that got booed down. It did not pass. And so this was a big shift, big shift. In fact, um, does anybody know, I didn't talk about it in class, the First African American to be on a major league baseball team in the 20th century. I've heard of Jackie Robinson. Jackie Robinson. Jackie Robinson was very much involved in Republican politics because of Lincoln. He went to this convention and they booed him down. And he would he could switch parties. This was a big deal. He thought he could still work with Republicans because that's the party of Lincoln. This is a big shift. And yes. I know, I'm sorry, a new h Nothing to do with them. They were into chemistry. But also, and intensely anti-communist. Goldwater talked casually about starting World War III, about drop, a lobbying an atomic bomb in the bathroom of the Kremlin, casually, and talked about, we're gonna have, if we're gonna win in South Vietnam, we have to turn North Vietnam into a glowing parking lot. That's what he said. Do you know what I mean when I say glowing? Yes. He's talking casual about World War III. I should say that people didn't really like that whole blowing up the world thing. But there are two other things. He was also intensely anti-New Deal. But didn't talk about that. Because people liked the New Deal. And he was intensely anti-union. But that was kind of kept under the bell. They, what do they focus on? You're going to lose your job. Not, we're going to get rid of labor and social security. And this is pretty common. Focus on one social issue to try to get something else passed. So Barry Goldwater really did paint himself as, as, as an extremist. And that's when he said, in your heart, you know he's right. That was your slogan. Democrats would change that to, in your guts, you know he's nuts. And so with that, all Johnson had to do, in fact, Johnson was overjoyed it was Goldwater. I just have to play the moderate, the rational one, who's not going to blow the world up. Well, Johnson, Goldwater's strategy will be dubbed the Southern strategy, and this will become the Republican strategy for the rest next 20 years. And it was to appeal to Southern white Democrats who many of them were segregationists. And so play upon their fear of losing what they have or whatever it could be. And here's an article from Collier's Magazine or an advertisement for it in 64, where it talks about there's Eisenhower for trying to appeal to Southern Democrats. And now Goldwater is doing this. Nixon would master this, Richard Nixon, the Republican. So, yes. In fact, Strom Thurmond, remember who ran for president in 48, he took the Democrats. In 64, he made a big deal. He made a very public switch to the Republican Party. And that was a big deal because if they switch parties, they lose, they lose a seniority, which is a big deal in the Senate. The Republicans then keep a seniority. 
they want to touch. So anybody can do it. And so the talking golf incident would take place. Now the war was going badly, but South Vietnam was hanging on. South Vietnam, the South Vietnamese command was thinking about special forces in the United States or Rangers. They were raiding North Vietnam, which was actually kind of crazy, but they were raiding North Vietnam bases because they believed North Vietnamese were helping from there. They were trying to escalate the war, hoping North Vietnam would quit up in the Viet Cong. U.S. ships were aiding them and actually secretly firing on North Vietnam too. Nobody outside a few people in the Defense Department do, knew this. Here's the USS Maddox. It was right here, and it fired on the North Vietnamese during this commando raid. And as it sailed away, North Vietnamese torpedo boats sailed out and they attacked the Maddox. Now, these are little tiny patrol boats. They did no damage. They had a couple cannon shots, that was it. Nobody was killed or wounded. Well, LBJ grabbed one of these. All right. Some of the advisors say, use this as an excuse to attack the North as a reprisal, but don't start World War III. You know, just a small attack that will kill people. Johnson, for good reason, said no, because that, that commander, what if that comes out? So two days later, they sent a second mission with two destroyers, no, no commando attack. So it's the Maddox and this is the other ship, the Turner Shore. And almost immediately that evening, as the sun went down, they reported a second attack by the North Vietnamese Navy. That's the end of the end. And they said, there are 10, 20, 30 ships in the water. There are torpedoes in the water. They're firing at us. Desperate to avoid one torpedo, the Maddox almost rammed the Turner Joy. They almost hit each other. They actually fired and some, some of their cannon shots hit the other ship. It got back to Washington, D.C. And, and Lyndon Johnson was told, we know for certain that North Vietnam attacked its skin, and Johnson ordered a retaliation. And aircraft carriers were there, launched fighter strikes, on three naval bases and a couple airfields, eight American planes were shot down, and that would be the first pilot taken prisoner by North Vietnam. And we had, we're not at war with North Vietnam. And so North Vietnam would treat these prisoners inexcusably, horrifically, but with the justification is these guys are terrorists. But they treated them so bad for the first four years, unbelievably. Then, before Johnson made the order, news started getting back to the to the Pentagon. Uh, we're not sure how many North Vietnamese ships. We're not sure how many torpedoes were in the water. We're not sure if we were attacked. Johnson made the order, not thinking the attack was there, but then never told the American public about the deaths. We now know for a fact there was no second attack. In fact, Johnson knew by 65. He said those boys were shooting at a bunch of damn flying fish. The radar operators freaked out. There were no attack. There was no attack. Does this remind you of anything? Like a battleship exploding in a harbor of a Spanish colony. Remember what battleship? Do you remember the remember the main that led to what war? Spanish American War. Or the, or the spot resolution where American cavalrymen were killed by Mexicans and Polk claimed they were north of the Rio Grande River, even though he had no idea. Another lot to get into the war. Johnson would use this as an excuse to get rid of everything and turn the world black. He started an eclipse. This is that was weird, the Tonkin Gulf Resolution. 
the Tonkin Gulf resolution, unanimous in the House, all but two liberal Republicans voted against it. And it basically gave Johnson a blank check to do anything he wanted dealing with South Vietnam. So this would look tough for the election. But you notice one bombing strike, and then he didn't escalate more. So he didn't look like a lunatic. He didn't look like he wanted to start World War II. He was stable, moderate, rational. He's not talking about blowing up the bathrooms of the Kremlin with an atomic bomb. And this would be the justification for the war. And it was all built on a law. And the first of many laws. Part of the reason so many people would believe that the Kennedy assassination was something much more sinister when all of these lies started to come out. And you can imagine how people felt. Well, if they're lying about this, what else were they lying about? And then on Friday, I will tell you about Watergate. So another lie. And so now they could use, in fact, this commercial was only shown one time. One of the most famous commercials to show that Goldwater was an extremist. They showed it once, but then everybody talked about it. Are you ready? I lied. I lied through my teeth. Yeah! All right, here we go. It's called the Daisy app. And they only showed it once. It is such a great ad as a factory. Oh, it's pretty amazing. Isn't she cute? Here's Johnson. <laughs> what do you think? It's a darn good app, as a fact. And Goldwater was talking about World War III all the time. In fact, when he would do rallies, they didn't like hearing about World War III. But when he would talk about anti-civil rights, his crowd was his friend. Look at the race. Johnson would win the biggest popular vote margin in U.S. history. What a mandate for the great society. And it seemed like that conservative insurgency was dead. No. Conservative insurgency would take over the Republican Party 20 years later. 100%. And the Electoral College was also a massive victory. Arizona makes sense. That was Goldwater's home state. It's all at South, but the Democrats was really breaking up. And, okay, he overly, overwhelmingly won Texas. Johnson, Texas. These were close. So Lyndon Johnson. And this would have been the perfect time for Lyndon Johnson to say, we've won in Vietnam. The Civil War is over. Declare victory. Go home. But he couldn't stomach it. He couldn't stomach that. And it started to blow up. I should add one more Johnson story real quick. So he said that. So he's able to keep Vietnam after Tom and Dahl off. Just barely. Out of the news. And so he didn't have to talk about it. He could talk about the Great Society and avoiding war. As he would say about Vietnam. And why he kept this on the back room. If you have a mother-in-law who has three eyes, and one of those eyes is in the middle of her forehead, you don't keep her in the living room. Don't you understand? That's so obvious. I okay. So if you have somebody with a third eye right here, would you bring her out in public and say, Look, no, you kind of. I like that. Really yeah. Oh, Johnson said more things. Some I can't tell you. 
There's a lot I can't tell you about Lyndon Johnson. This was a college class, maybe. Well, South Vietnam, after right after the election, right after the inauguration, it was it blew up. Two American air bases that were supporting the South Vietnamese army were attacked. And over 100 airmen were killed or wounded, U.S. airmen. Here is the commander of U.S. forces, their General Westmoreland, looking at it. Here's the mortar attack. South Vietnam was not defending the air bases. It looked like this might be the, um, the stage for South Vietnam to fall. And Johnson is now set with, do I have to send troops or do we pull out? And he couldn't stomach it. And then at the same time, remember, the Civil Rights Act was passed first. It didn't deal with voting rights. But just like the March on Washington, the Southern leadership, the Southern Christian Leadership Council, a group called the Congress for Racial Equality and others, organized in March, in March, or I'm sorry, in February, from Selma to Montgomery, Alabama. Alabama, remember what I said about George Wallace? And this was for voting rights. And this was just like the March on Washington in 63 to push Johnson, who obviously showed he was a great ally, but Johnson's like, well, give me time, I just got elected. Vietnam's blowing up, and now he's worried about, he'll be accused of being soft on communism, and then this march. And as they neared Montgomery, Alabama State Police stopped him and waded into the marchers with their nightclubs, beating them up. And this was on national television. And Johnson now is, they made Johnson act. I mean, this is how the civil rights movement, I mean, they forced these politicians to do this. This was a fight. I want to be clear. It wasn't a few, mostly at this time, men in Congress who just decided to bestow people rights. No. They were pushed into it. They were made to do it. And now Johnson has this conundrum. Vietnam voting rights, what about the rest of my program? What about it? So Johnson is going to order. Oh, here is a, one of the more famous pictures. She had just got struck and not unconscious with that still, by that big trooper on the march. And here is, I got one of them as she almost made it back to the church. This is about the march. And protesters were there, and the Confederate battle flag was used all the time as anti uh, Jim Crow. I'm sorry, as pro Jim Crow, anti immigration. So, what is it going to be? Civil rights or Vietnam? So, the movement announced another march. And Chauncey's like, I got act. They're making him act. Now, he wanted voting rights. But he's one of those, I want it, but you'll give me time. No, we're out of time. You got to act. But what about Vietnam? If he pushes for voting rights, people might accuse him of giving up on Vietnam. And so he would order Operation Rolling Thunder. Two weeks after some, and this is going to be sustained bombing at the North. To try to push the North to the peace table for two Vietnams. So now the United States is escalating the war by attacking the North. There is, this is actually 1968. That's a, a new American fighter plane called the F-4 Phantom. And it's over the North. And quickly they ran out of targets. There's not a lot in the North to bomb. And killed a lot of civilians in this bombing grid. They're already bombing the South. Now they're going to bomb the North. But here's the problem. They got air, there's air bases. They don't want another attack. And so Johnson said, well, if we're going to have air bases, we got to send it. Oh, here is a plane on a carrier about ready to attack. And I just had to show you this because do you see it? Yeah, do you see the toilet? I don't know why they got the toilet. That's, I just thought that was really funny. I, I think it was to balance out the extra fuel tank, but it's really funny. That's, a, that's an A1 Skyrim. So to protect these bases, the Marines are going to land at Da Nang. Not advisors, regular combat troops. Da Nang is right here. One of the few harbors in North Vietnam at that time. 
Marines are going to land, and they're going to land in full gear, and their rifles ready like they're landing in Iwo Jima in World War II. Instead, they're met by young Vietnamese women who gave them flowers. It was just this surreal beginning of the Vietnam War. But once they have troops there, they don't want to sit in their bunkers. They want to go out and get the Viet Cong and fight. And now what is Johnson going to do? Right after this, Johnson goes on national television in a joint session of Congress and doesn't just propose, he demands a voting rights act. Demands it. One thing people forget about this era, if they just do, let's talk about civil rights too. And then tomorrow we'll talk about Vietnam. And then we'll talk about something else. They forget that it was all linked. Nothing happens in a vacuum. Everything's linked together. Johnson is thinking, I got to show on top. Now I propose and the voting rights bill. But now you got troops in Vietnam. Now what? So Johnson, he is given this choice. And this is the way John, there are more choices in this, but he's given this bargain where there's only two choices. He must, he has to escalate or he might lose the great society. And his defense secretary, Robert McNamara, who is Kennedy's defense secretary. And for those of you, there's a couple of special topics. Remember that video, that movie we watched on McNamara? He, the guy was everywhere. The guy literally was everywhere. He said, if we just bomb a little bit, North Vietnam will go to the peace. Not realizing that Vietnam really wanted one Vietnam. Johnson going against what was probably better judgment, but also his refusal to lose a war, agreed. Only one of his key advisors said, don't go. Here's Mike Mansfield of Montana. This is one of these moments, it's almost like a Greek tragedy, this play. Because this is going to be so divisive to this day. So he decided to escalate. A few months afterwards, he is going to commit full ground forces. So he's going to commit, he sends a couple of U.S. infantry divisions. He, um, he just had a new division called the Air Mobile or Air Cab Division of Helicopter Troops. Just doesn't make a big deal about it. The justification, the Tonkin Golf Resolution. He doesn't tell people that they're going to be there long. He implies it's just going to be a short occupation. He doesn't tell the American public that the Pentagon says, oh, yeah, we might win, but it's going to require over 500,000 troops. He doesn't tell them this. The reasons he committed to save the great society. But also, what president is going to commit most of the advisors before Johnson, the slain Kennedy. And he was worried that if he went against this, Democrats, especially John Kennedy's brother Robert, will accuse him of destroying his brother's legacy. And Johnson had bad dreams about being known as the mistake between the candidates. John Kennedy, the mistake, and then Robert Kennedy would be elected. He had these nightmares of this. His hatred of Robert Kennedy and, and vice versa was legendary. And credibility. Back to Berlin. Remember Berlin? Credibility. If we're going to be credible in Europe, we've got to be credible in South Vietnam. Now, this actually makes no sense. But that's what he did. You know, what does South Vietnam have to do with Germany? But this is that. Truman Doctrine thinking. But here's the biggie. Oh, and once the U.S. started committing forces, yes, who started committing forces? North Vietnam. Not as many, but they started sending troops down south. And so they matched the escalation. So soon the United States is bombing North Vietnam and fighting North Vietnamese troops in South Vietnam along the Viet Cong. Last thing. But to save the Great Society, he kept this massive troop increase secret. He kept the money. They tried to hide it in budgets for years. They shifted money around. They secretly stripped troops from West Germany. They did all of these things. By the way, if you escalate to save the Great Society and keep it secret to save the Great Society, 
What's going to happen to the Great Society? It's going to get a lot of bills passed. A lot that have great effect to this day, but he killed it. Tomorrow, a couple things, and we'll get to 68. And then Nixon, Watergate, 70s, all the way up to 1985 Monday. Sound good? Review session, what time? Six, we're at. It's going to be out to the side door. Now, of course, it's not mandatory, but I help you a lot. Oh, what am I going to do starting? I said tomorrow, right? What did I say today? Tomorrow at lunch, what will I do tomorrow at lunch? Help. I will help you, yes. That kind of scared me that, that you know where I live. I almost look like a good time back record to David's Talk about that. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, good. I forgot, yeah, I live near there, don't I? Yeah, so now I have to make that change. Thank you. I've got a cool lunch to read on. Thank you. 35 years. Oh. Don't swear. I'll tell you. I, you know, whatever about them. Doritos, taco flavored Doritos. Plus, what do you think? Have you had those? Those are the best. Those are the best. They do put like chips. If you get a bag of chips, it is best with Doritos. And you put like taco meat. I've had it, but I've seen another bunker. So, like, also with the, the like, nacho one. Nacho cheese. Yeah. yeah, I've had it. It's pretty tasty. And good for you. Pat? Yes. If you were gone, yeah, I'll say, what day is today? We were right here, weren't we? No, you weren't here. This is Partridge. Oh, we might. Somebody say my name. Yeah, I stand. Come on, you can't. Who, who said my name? Over here. Yes. Hey, was John C. Calhoun ever president? No. Was he a vice president? Was, I, I thought he was, was in the He was the first vice president to resign. He was Jackson vice president. They hate, actually, yeah, they hated the chief of government. Who was the president who also thinking that was like signed James in? James Buchanan. Oh, Buchanan. Oh, yes. Did he have like similar ideas to Calhoun? Not necessarily, but he was a dull thing. Remember, yeah, that was yeah. a, a Northern Democrat that supported Southern. He wasn't quite the extreme of having like two presidents in the media. But he was pro yeah. protecting slavery yeah. in the South. Yeah, but okay, so Calhoun was Jackson's like, right. I think he was in there somewhere. I know, they, that's one thing. Oh, so you know, you remember and they start running together. I understand that. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I think so. Yeah, I 